The Medical Research Council has made many leading contributions to the field of DNA research. The first major breakthrough came in 1953. Molecular biologist Professor James Watson and Dr. Francis Crick, working at the MRC's Cavendish Laboratory Unit in Cambridge, were the first to publish a defined structure of DNA. Using X-ray images taken at the MRC's Biophysics Unit, Watson and Crick identified the shape of a double helix, two strands running parallel to each other. Watson and Crick's double helix structure immediately hit the spot. And people knew as soon as they saw that structure that it, it, it had to be right. Every human cell has a nucleus, and every nucleus contains 23 pairs of chromosomes. Our DNA is tightly packed into these chromosomes. In fact, if you were to take all the DNA strands from a single cell nucleus, join them together and stretch them out, they would measure about a meter in length. Information is held in our DNA as genes. Genes contain specific instructions for building protein, which is the essential material that carries out almost all of the vital chemical reactions within a cell. It also regulates human development and growth. DNA is the fundamental molecule that underlies all life. It's the molecule that contains our genes, so it contains all the information for um, how we are made, how we will develop, how we will respond to our environment and how we will pass that information on to the next generation. The discovery of the double helix structure greatly accelerated the pace of DNA research. The first methods for analysing it came in the 1970s when MRC biochemist Dr. Frederick Sanger developed a revolutionary technique known as sequencing. This gave scientists the toolkit to begin exploring the structure of DNA. In 1975, MRC-funded molecular biologist Professor Sir Edwin Southern invented a method for identifying whether specific gene sequences were contained in a sample of DNA. This technique became known as the Southern blot. Sir Edwin has subsequently dedicated his life to the field of DNA research. In the late 1960s, I joined a, uh, an MRC group in Edinburgh. And the job that I've been given was to sequence parts of DNA called satellite DNAs. We had first to isolate the different kinds of DNA. And what I was trying to do then was to use enzymes called restriction endonucleases. Now these enzymes cut up DNA at specific sites in the sequence. So the problem then became which fragments contain the, uh, the 5S genes. And it was, it was to answer that question that um, I developed the blotting technique. So the southern blot is a way of, if you like, looking inside the DNA from um, a particular organism or individual. The impact has been quite widespread. To test whether a particular sequence is present within a person, a sample of their DNA is taken and cut into segments using an enzyme. These DNA segments are then placed in a jelly-like substance called a gel. They are subjected to an electric current which has the effect of ordering the segments by size. Sodium hydroxide is used to break apart the double helix structure of the DNA to create single strands. These strands are then transferred onto a solid membrane in the same position that they occupied in the gel. Scientists can now use this membrane to see if specific DNA sequences are present. This is done by adding a probe, which is a single-strand sample of the DNA sequence being tested for. The probe only binds with a segment that has a complementary sequence. And because the probe has been made radioactive, scientists can use X-ray photography to see whether it is bonded. This confirms the presence of the DNA sequence. At a fundamental level, the southern blot enables, or enables us to do such things as DNA fingerprinting, which has been used in a variety of medical contexts, but also in more forensic contexts. 
One of the most famous developments that the Southern Blot paved the way for occurred in the field of forensics. In 1984, MRC-funded geneticist Sir Alec Jeffries of the University of Leicester was investigating distinct repeats found within DNA known as mini-satellites. Sir Alec determined that a person's mini-satellites were so unique that the chances of two people having the same pattern were extremely unlikely. The application to police work was realised immediately. DNA fingerprinting works by looking at very highly variable pieces of DNA and the original technology we developed absolutely crucially needed the southern blot to be able to detect these variable segments of DNA to produce on x-ray film a pattern that looks a bit like a barcode unique to an individual and very simply inherited. It covers everything from catching criminals, sorting out paternity disputes, resolving immigration cases, telling twins whether they're identical or not. I mean, the list is absolutely endless. If you look at the work that I've done since about 1975-76, um, it was all driven by the Southern Bloc. So, first detection of human genes, first uh, discovery of the fact that, that human genes are very frequently split, first detection of variation in human DNA, the development of DNA fingerprinting, the first maps of the human genome, uh, the first clinical DNA diagnostics, all done using the Southern Block. In 1985, Sir Edwin Southern moved to the University of Oxford to take up the Whitley Professorship of Biochemistry. It was here that he developed the science underpinning the Southern Blot into the much more sophisticated technology known as the DNA chip, or microarray. A DNA chip is, is very simply, uh, it's just a piece of glass. Most commonly it's, it's a microscope slide. On its surface are printed lots of very small spots of uh, nucleic acid sequences. What you have fixed to the surface is the known sequence that's going to probe the unknown. So that's the opposite of the blotting procedure. In blotting, you can ask questions about one gene at a time. With DNA chips, you're looking, you're looking at uh, 100,000 different probes against the complex sequence that you want to analyze. And that's the, the power of this uh, microarray technology. DNA chips have made a huge impact on medicine. They enabled clinicians to monitor a patient's response to treatment at the genetic level. His work has absolutely transformed the, the face of molecular genetics. It gave us all a lot of the tools that we needed, you know, the southern blot, uh, DNA arrays and so on. Um, so his work has been absolutely transformative. Being able to explore and understand DNA has had a dramatic impact on the way that we live. It has led to advances that stretch way beyond its application to medicine and health. And even though DNA was first identified over 65 years ago, our work in this field is only just beginning. Yeah.